This is the Dean, the Dean Show. This is the Dean Show. This is the Dean, this is the Dean Show. Bismillah, alhamdulillah, assalamu alaikum, peace be with you. Welcome to the Dean Show. We're very excited that you're joining us here tonight on the Dean Show. You got away from the late night football game. You got away from all the all the things that are out there distracting you from the most important questions in life. What's the purpose of life? Why am I here? Who created me? What's the correct way that I need to be upon to be successful in this life and in the hereafter? And this is a very, very important topic because many people are heading in the direction and it's the wrong direction. They're taking a man as God, saying that God had a son, and all other sorts of confusion is out there, but today we're going to clear the confusion about one of the most mightiest messengers that God ever sent to mankind. Jesus, peace be upon him. We have Dr. Lawrence Brown here on the Dean Show. We cleared up the confusion about Jesus being the only begotten son, but in today's episode, we're going to clear up the confusion about him being the son of God. When we come back, sit tight. Dr. Lawrence Brown, coming up next. This is the Dean, the Dean Show. This is the Dean Show. This is the Dean, this is the Dean Show. This is the Dean Show. This is the Dean Show. This is the Dean, this is the Dean Show. This is the Dean, this is the Dean Show. 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 Assalamu alaikum. Peace be with you, Dr. Lawrence Brown. How are you? Wa alaikum salam. Wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Thank you, thank you for being on the Dean Show again. People can go to thedeanshow.com. You have your own private section there. They can read a little bit about you. You have a PhD in religious in religion mm -hmm. you have a dd you're a doctor by profession mm -hmm. and you love talking about these important issues and when i started the show i thanked everyone who's joining us because these are serious issues so they took a time off from the basketball games the football games maybe they took a time off from going to the nightclub just for this night this show because we got serious things to talk about people are just getting fed up it's a rat race out there they want to know the purpose of life they want to make sure they're going in the right direction if they're not and this is a crucial topic because many people, they believe in God. It's inherent in their nature. But there's some confusion about Jesus. There's some confusion about Jesus. Now, in one show that people can see that we did, it's at thedeanshow.com, we cleared up the confusion. You gave the top five reasons, Dr. Brown's top five re reasons why Jesus, peace be upon him, who we love dearly, he is not the begotten son of God. Now, you have some, a few more that you're going to share for us. How many exactly? Right. Well, on this episode, we're going to be talking about eight top reasons. Eight top reasons. Why Jesus Christ was not the Son of God. We got to get right into it. Let's okay. start with number eight, wasting no time. Okay. Take it away. Last time we were talking about the tenet of Christian faith of Jesus Christ being considered the only begotten Son of God. We dispelled the only, we dispelled the begotten. Now we're just going to talk about the concept of Jesus Christ being considered the Son of God. Okay, so number eight, the reason why Jesus Christ was not the Son of God. Many Christians say Jesus Christ was the Son of God because Jesus called God Father. Jesus called God Father, so Jesus must be the Son of God. However, what do you call God? I mean... I bet that most people out there, when they pray to God, they say, oh, you know, our Father. And why do they say our Father? Because Jesus Christ instructed his followers. He said, when you pray, pray in this way. Our Father. He didn't say my Father. He said our Father. Our Father. That's a key point And he point instructed here. everybody to pray in this way. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, etc., etc., etc. The Lord's Prayer. So the point is that this is not... This is not a, an argument hold, that holds water. You cannot use this argument to say Jesus Christ was the Son of God because he called God Father, because Jesus Christ told all of his followers to call God our Father. 
That's number eight. That's number eight. Moving on to moving number on, seven. Moving on. Let's go to number okay. seven. Number seven. Some people say just Jesus Christ might be the Son of God because other people identify Jesus Christ as the Son of God. First of all, this is not quite true. The passage or the, or the words pais theo are translated to Son of God, but the primary meaning, the primary translation of pais theo is servant, servant of God. Okay, now, all right, don't trust me on this. Let's say that you even prefer to translate pais theo as Son of God. Look at it from a different angle. We find Pais Theo eight times in the New Testament. Five times reference Jesus. Once in the book of Matthew uh, 12, 15, and four times in Acts. Okay? But there are three times that we find Pais Theo that do not relate to Jesus at all. Two of them relate to David, in, once in Luke and once in Acts. One relates to Israel in Luke uh, 1, 54. So uh, you can look all of these up, but the bottom line is that five times Jesus Christ is identified as Pais Theo, twice David is identified as Pais Theo, once Israel is identified as Pais Theo. If Pais Theo means son of God, that means you have to include not only Jesus, but you have to count David and Israel into the formula as well. All right? And since nobody does that, you have to throw the entire concept out. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, moving on. So now we cover, we got eight... Eight... Um, of the top eight, why he's not the son of God. And we're moving on. We went from eight, seven. Let's hit six because it relates to just what I was talking about. Take it away with number six. Okay. Pais theo means servant of God, but it's been translated to son of God. The other word that you find in the New Testament most commonly that is translated to son is spelled H-U-I-O-S, huios. This is translated metaphorically. When you see son of in the Bible, almost always it's huios, but almost always it is translated metaphorically, or the meaning is metaphorical. I'll give you an example. Matthew 17, 25, the believers are identified as sons of the king. Sons of the king. Luke 19, 9, God's elect are identified as sons of Abraham. Matthew 7, 9, the believers are identified as God's sons. As what? God's sons. And those are the believers. Okay, so if the believers are God's sons, that means all believers are God's sons. Okay, now are you going to understand that literally or figuratively, metaphorically? I'll give you a hint. Students in Matthew 12, 27, students are identified as sons of the Pharisees. In John 19, 26, the favorite disciple is identified as Mary's son, even though he wasn't Mary's son. Okay, you go on to Matthew 8, 12, you find sons of the kingdom. You go to Luke 10, 6, we've got sons of peace, Luke 16, 8, sons of light, sons of this world, sons of thunder. Does any of this sound real? I mean, does any, any of this sound literal? Sons of this world, sons of light, sons of thunder, a lot sons of, of sons peace, sons of kingdom, sons of God, sons of Abraham, sons of the believers, sons of... Uh, no, this is all metaphorical. And if we look at the scholars, leading to item number five, if we look at the scholars, the scholars tell us this has to be a metaphor. It can't be anything but a metaphor, right? This is reason number five. So we're moving on to five Re now. Reason number five. five, why Jesus Christ is not the Son of God, is because scholars tell us it's not possible for this to be literal. It can only be metaphor. Why? Because if it was intended literally, in, in the time of Jesus Christ, it would have been considered blasphemy, and anybody who had said it, according to the laws of the Old Testament, would have been considered as disbeliever and would have been executed. So you have to either accept it as a metaphor, or if not as a metaphor, it would have been blasphemous, and those who, those who proposed it would have, uh, would have been punished for blasphemy. So we're going to stop at five. We went from eight to five. So when we come back, we're going to do four. Sounds good to me. We'll be right back with number four, the top eight, Dr. Lawrence Brown here on The Dean Show. This is the Dean. I don't say to people I used to be a Christian. I still carry the values and the principles of loving Jesus Christ and perhaps maybe more than the people who call themselves Christians. So I think I got the best out of Christianity by becoming Muslim. 
so many other things that you can enjoy without drinking a sip of alcohol. Death is the same thing. It's not an obstacle. It's not something to cause people to get completely desperate and start stopping living their lives. No, it should be a motivation. It's only one life that you're going to be living, so you better do it for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Back here on the Dean Show with Dr. Lawrence Brown, and we're giving the people the top eight reasons in this show why Jesus is not the Son of God, never claimed to be the Son of God, could not be the Son of God, and you're on a roll. You went from eight, now we're on four. Mm -hmm. Please continue on. Okay, number four. Number four reason why Jesus Christ was not the Son of God, or why we should believe that Jesus Christ was not the Son of God, is that Jesus Christ did not call himself the Son of God. Okay, we have to believe that Jesus Christ was what he said he was. He never called himself... And he never the, called never. himself the Son of God. Okay. Okay? What do we have to back up that position? Okay, Hastings Bible Dictionary says, whether Jesus used it, the term Son of God, whether Jesus used it of himself is doubtful. Harper's Bible Dictionary says it even more clearly. Quote, Jesus never claims for himself the title Son of God. Now these are, these are from respected uh, Bible dictionaries and they are telling us that Jesus Christ never called himself the Son of God. Now I know what a lot of people out there are thinking. They're thinking, I read my Bible, I find Son of God. You have to understand that what the scholars are talking about are not what you find in your translation. What the scholars are talking about is what they find in the manuscripts from which the Bible is translated. Okay, that's a very important point. Uh, a person can translate a document to read whatever they want it to read. You have to go to the source documents to really understand what it says precisely. Okay, but even in your Bibles, even in your Bibles, you will find that Jesus never called himself the Son of God in a literal begotten, not made sense. So that's number four. That's number four. We're, Jump to number three. We got three left. There is... Uh, there is a statement among Christian missionaries. It's called the trilemma. Right? They come up to us and they say, look, Jesus was either a liar, he was a lunatic, or he was the son of God as he said he was. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, look, as Muslims we agree, Jesus Christ was not a liar, he was not a lunatic, he was exactly what he said he was, but where did he say that he was the son of God? He didn't. But what did he say he was? Reason number three. Jesus called himself, what? The Son of Man. Eighty-eight times. Go and count them. Eighty-eight times Jesus identified himself as the Son of Man. Not as the Son of God, as the Son of Man. The New Catholic Encyclopedia states, quote, This title is of special interest because it was the one employed by Jesus by preference to designate himself and his mission. Now that's the New Catholic Encyclopedia telling us that Jesus Christ employed the title Son of Man by preference to, de to designate himself and his mission. That's number three reasons why we should understand that Jesus Christ was not the Son of God. These are very simple and not complicated to understand. I want to get through these. That's the and, best. And I have a few important questions, very important questions I want to ask you, so continue on. We're going to number two now. Number two. Reasons why Jesus Christ, why we should realize he's not the Son of God. Jesus is identified in the New Testament 14 times, 14 times as the son of David. Who was Jesus' father? Was it David? No. No. We find in the book of Luke a list of genealogy from David 41 generations until it works its way down to Jesus Christ. And even then, we have to remember that Jesus Christ didn't have a father. Okay? He was born, by, he was born to the Virgin Mary as a divine miracle. 
a sign from God of, of, the, of the fact that he was a prophet. But in any case, we have David, 41 generations in the book of Luke before we get to Jesus. If you look in Matthew, it's 26 generations. Let's not get hung up over the fact that Luke and Matthew can't agree. That's a different point to be made about the Bible. Let's just acknowledge that Jesus Christ is called the son of David 14 times in the Bible, and he most definitely was not the son of David. So what do we have here? If, if the Bible is saying literally that he was the son of David, the Bible is wrong. And you have to rectify an error in the Bible with your belief that the Bible is the word of God, because obviously God doesn't make a mistake. Or you have to recognize, as we have already discussed, that in fact, the language is figurative. It is metaphorical. It is not meant to be taken literally. Now that's, that's, that's number that's two. Number two. Now, People are going to have to hold up for number one, because I have to ask you a very serious question now, Dr. Brown. Now, someone might say, you know what? Okay, this sounds all good. You're making sense. But, you know, from, from a child, you know, I've been brought up to believe that, you know, there's a big fat man, uh, Santa Claus coming down the chimney. I've been, I, I, I've been programmed to believe, you know, the uh, tooth fairy is going to come and, you know, uh, take my tooth under the pillow, et cetera, et cetera. We get programmed with a lot of things, you know? Some people grow out of that, all right? But now this, this is something that's even more serious. And they say, you know what? What's the big deal? I'll just, if I make a mistake, if this is wrong, on that day of judgment, I'll look God in the eye and I'll say, you know what, God, I'm sorry. And we'll take it from there. What do you got to say about that? Well, you know, I think that we've, uh, you know, we've touched on this before. I mean, the bottom line is that this life is our test. And with the end of this life, that's the end of the test. And there are no apologies later in the same way that you can't go to your teacher at the end of your final exam and ask him to open the book and let you change it. You know, once the exam is done, once that exam book is closed, your, your deeds are done. In this life, when you die, that is the, that is the closure upon your deeds. And that at that moment you lose the ability to go back and fix anything you can it's finished this is your shot right now our shot this is, this is what life is all about look god could have taken all, all of us and put us in paradise directly if he wanted to or he could have taken us and put us in hellfire but instead he put us in this life with free will to choose our own direction and based upon our choices, based upon the path that we choose for ourselves, whether to be pious and righteous or not, that is going to sort out the people who go to paradise, the people who go to hell, and the degrees of their punishment and the degrees of their reward. Okay, now, but, but, but our, deeds, our deeds end when our lives end. Now, is this... An insult to God to say that God had a son? Is this something that is... Absolutely. It's an insult. Absolutely. Why? Because, because first of all, how, how can God have a son when he doesn't have a consort? All right? Uh, se secondly, we know from the first commandment, right, not to place partners beside God. And uh, we know that the most important, important, important commandment is that know your God is one God, all right? Three times in the Bible, three times in the New Testament, Jesus Christ uh, is asked about the most important commandment, and this is what he states. He says, know, O Israel, your God is one God. He'd, look, if there were such a thing as a trinity, if Jesus Christ were the Son of God, if there were mysteries of faith, that would have been the place to have said it. Mm -hmm. I mean, that would have been the place to have said, Know, O Israel, the Lord your God, the Lord is one. But it's not quite that simple. There are other elements to it. Let me explain. He didn't say that. All right? He said, the Lord your God, the Lord is one, period. And it's recorded three times in the Bible, and there is no, you know, there are no passages which contradict that or shed another light on that. And what is revelation? What is revelation? Revealation. The point of revelation is to reveal. 
This, this is God conveying through a human agent his word to mankind to reveal to us the reality of him and the reality of his laws. Okay? So this, this is where he's going to make it clear to us. Why would there be such a thing as a trinity? And he doesn't make that clear to us. Why would there be such a thing as a son of God? And he doesn't, he doesn't clarify that. I'm giving you all the reasons why we should realize that Jesus Christ was not the Son of God. And we're going to give them the number one reason, and they're going to have to hold on to after the break. We'll be right back with the number one reason why Jesus, peace be upon him, was not the Son of God with Dr. Lawrence Brown. We'll be right back. And if we're going to worship something, I figured I might as well worship the Creator instead of any of the creations. Now, in, upon investigating all the religions, I remember finding out the meaning of what Islam is, what a Muslim is. Those who surrender their self to God is a Muslim. Those who surrender, submit to God, God's will. That is it. Islam was pure. It was just, you just pray to God, your creator. On the outside, everything looks good. You see the $100,000 cars, you see a lot of diamonds, you see a lot of females, and they think that this is, you know, this is the life. This is, this is, like, you know, paradise right here on earth. It's not anyone's job to go into someone's heart and change their heart. Your job is to tell people what the truth is. And the reality of it is, while we're sitting here, while I'm sitting here constantly paying for the disease, the cure was free. Back here on the Dean Show, and you've been patiently awaiting for the number one reason why Jesus, peace be upon him, who we love very dearly, he was one of the mightiest messengers of God, we believe, but he was not the Son of God, never claimed to be, and you're going to now give us, God willing, the number one reason from your top eight. Please, go ahead, Dr. Brown. All right, the number one reason is, well, how many sons of God are you going to believe in? Christian doctrine tells us that Jesus Christ was the only begotten Son of God. There is only one Son of God, and that was Jesus Christ. And yet, Jeremiah 31, 9 states, quote, For I, meaning God, this is God speaking, For I am a father to Israel, and Ephraim is my firstborn. Well, now, wait a minute. If Jesus Christ is the only begotten Son of God, how can God be the father to Israel? And Ephraim is his firstborn. How is that possible? But that's what it says. Jeremiah 31, verse 9. Romans 8, verse 14. Quote, For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are, what? They are the sons of God. Exodus 4, 22. Israel is my son, even my firstborn. Now, what part of that is mysterious? Israel is my son, even my firstborn. Um, so you have, to, you have to start making a list, really, of who is, who is a son of God and who is not. And that list is not short. Luke 3, 38, Adam, which was the son of God. Okay? 2, Samuel 7, 13, identifies Solomon as the son of God. Genesis 6, 2, 6, 4, Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy 14, 1, you can go to Job 1, 6, 2, 1, 38, 7. All of these passages identify individuals or groups as sons of God or children of God. Everybody knows the passage, Matthew 5, 9, Blessed are the peacemakers, blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the sons of God. Okay, so let's just tabulate a whole list here. We've got Israel, we've got Solomon, we've got Adam, we've got countless individuals who are identified by group, not by individual, but by groups as children or sons of God. So where does the list end? On one hand, you have the Bible saying all of these people are sons of God. On the other hand, you have the church saying Jesus Christ was the only begotten Son of God. Again, there's a big problem. You cannot rectify these two. 
They are mutually exclusive. You can't say one person is the only begotten son of God and then all these other people are sons or children of God as well. Okay? So something is wrong. The church is wrong. The Bible is wrong. Something is wrong. And I think most people know it. So this is the number one reason why we should realize Jesus Christ is not the Son of God. It's because so many people were spoken of as sons of God, literally, in a begotten, not made sense. No. Once again, we have to realize this is metaphorical. It is not meant to be taken literally. It is an expression of closeness to God. It is, it is an expression of piety, but it is not an expression of reality. It is not a literal expression of sonship as we understand sonship in a literal sense. Now, we're almost out of time. In the last minute that we have, please tell us, because some people might think, man, these guys are the Antichrist. What's going on here? <laughs> so are we the Antichrist? And tell us just in, in the one minute that we have briefly, you know, where people can also go after you explain that we're not the Antichrist, uh, how people can get in Look. contact with you and learn more about this topic. Look, you're not the Antichrist when you speak up for what Christ himself taught. We are supporting what Jesus Christ actually taught. We believe in him as a man and as a prophet, as he taught us to believe in him. Okay, you, you, you do not denigrate the prophet by tearing down the, the lies that have been constructed in his name. Because should he return, he would be the first one to attack those as well. He would be the first one to say, I never said that. Where can you find this information? Everything that you have heard tonight, you can find on my websites and a great deal more, uh, leveltruth.com and eighthscroll.com. Uh, level Truth, just as it sounds, the two words, leveltruth.com. Eighth Scroll is uh, dedicated to a book called The Eighth Scroll. Just look it up, two words, eighthscroll.com. We're going to have to have you back again, inshallah, God willing. Thank you again. May God Almighty Allah reward you for being with us. Thank you. Thank you. And that was Dr. Lawrence Brown here on The Dean Show. And we have given you, he gave you eight of the top eight reasons why Jesus, peace be upon him, who we love dearly, was not, could not have been, never claimed to be the son of God. God doesn't have sons or daughters. He was not a man or woman. He created man and woman. He's the one God who Jesus prayed to. Throughout time, God has sent messengers, and that message that they delivered was always the same. Worship the Creator and not His creation. And we hope that you got to benefit, and we look forward to having you here again with us next time. Inshallah, God willing. Until then, peace be unto you.